Well, so we are. Good, good, good. Perfect timing. We are on tonight. Amen. We are on live. We are live. Oh, let me see. Make one small adjustment. Let's straighten up our camera. Okay, that's good. Good. All right. <clears throat> we had to make a little small adjustment, but we are on live. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for those of you that are coming in live tonight. Amen. Call a neighbor. Call a friend. Tell them that yours truly, Bishop HL. And Pastor Laura. Pastor Laura, we are live tonight. Live on, on Facebook. Facebook. The conference line. And we're live also on the conference line. And uh, we're just glad to be here tonight in Jesus' name. On this another PWW Powerful Word Wednesday. And we're so grateful for all of you that are coming in tonight. I see you. Amen. Sister uh, uh, Jean Snowden, Mother Snowden, God bless you. Mother Wiggins and uh, uh, Mother Mary Tynes, all of you that are coming in. Uh, Brother Allen, all of you that are coming in tonight, we just bring you greetings tonight. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're just excited uh, to be here. We've been gone for uh, the last two Wednesdays, uh, we want to thank Elder Glenn, yes, Sybil Glenn. Glenn. God bless you, uh, Elder Glenn, and to um, uh, Assistant Pastor Elder Gaylor and Sister Guy, uh, Sister Cynthia Gaylor, Elder Guy and Cynthia Gaylor, Lady Gaylor, we thank you. Uh, they filled in for us uh, for the last two weeks, and you did such a beautiful, such job. A beautiful job. And we want you to know we thank you. We appreciate you so much. I'm just glad to be back, Pastor. Glad to be back on Wednesday night and yes. glad to be home. We are home. <laughs> Can you tell from the background we that are we are home. back home? We're home. And we're yes. glad. God oh, bless you, Sister Della. God bless you. We're glad to be home tonight. And uh, we still got, uh, we got a, probably about 20% more work to do. We're probably uh -huh. like 80% finished. Exactly. Probably like another 20% more that needs to be done. But nevertheless, we thank God that we are home. Uh, what would they say? There's no place like home. No place like home. There is no place like home. So we just bring you greetings tonight in Jesus' name. And this is another PWW, another Powerful Word Wednesday. And we're bringing you greetings tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're just so glad so glad to be uh, coming your way tonight to be yeah. able to share with you from this awesome, awesome Word of God. Awesome. Uh, it is 7 o'clock, so we're going to begin our broadcast tonight. We have some individuals whose names that are on our prayer list that we're praying for. Uh, just before we go into the broadcast, we want to remind you, uh, those of you that are watching and those of you that are listening, those that are watching, call a neighbor, call a friend, tag and share. Let somebody know the power of faith and uh, Bishop HL and Pastor Laura are on. Now, those of you that are on the conference line, we're asking you to please make sure that you mute your phone so that we don't have any disruption yes. during uh, the broadcast sound. tonight. All right? Amen. Pastor, who are we praying for tonight? Yes, tonight we're praying for Mother Janie Petway, Bessie Simmons, Aisha Griffin, Kalina Patterson, Angela Glenn, Portia Pierce, Pamela Jones, Renee Rogers, Larry Pierce, Baby Elena, Baby Eden, Darlene Petway, Janine Evans, James McCauley, Daniel Gardner, Sabrina Thomas, Annie Graves, Brenda Porter, Tyler Jackson, Katrina Butts, Kanitra Calhoun, and family, Reverend Willa Mae Johnson, the family of Mother Dorothy Starks, um, who was the mother of Derek Starks, Pastor Anthony Starks, and Lena Starks, who passed 
a few days ago, a couple our days friends, ago. Our friends, yes, we've our been knowing the Stark family. The Starks family for years. Years, we, years, We want you years. to know Derek and, and Lena. We're and sending Pastor our Anthony prayers. And Pastor Anthony, we're praying for you we're praying all. We're praying for you yes, all during this time of bereavement. You're in our prayers. Absolutely. You're in our prayers. We're also praying for Reverend Jean McKeever, Minister Joanne Taylor. We're praying for the Glenn family. Um, in the loss of Pastor Lawson Glenn Jr., yes, yes. who is the nephew of our own uh, Lady Cynthia Gaylord and Elder um, Sybil, Sybil Glenn. Glenn. We're and praying for you, the Glenn family. family. We're praying for you. You're definitely in our prayers. Yes, to the sick and afflicted everywhere, the crisis in Russia, Ukraine, all over the world, and all unspoken requests. Listen, let's go to the throne of grace. Yes. And let's believe God. And I want to say to those of you that are going through bereavement tonight, to look up, look to the hills. Yes, yes, I yes. say this every opportunity yes. that I get when I come on on Wednesday nights. Look to the hills from where come with your help. Not some of your help, oh. but all of your oh. help. Whatever it is you need. Oh. Whatever it is you're going through, all of the help that you need cometh from the Lord. Yes. Pastor, would you pray for those that are on our prayer list yes. tonight? Kind Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you tonight as humbly as we Lord. know how. Giving your name yes, the glory, Lord. the honor, and the praise. God, we thank you for everything. Yes, we thank you for all in things. The name of God, Jesus. we thank you for every and all things that you are to us. God, we thank you right now. Yes, we come Father. before you on behalf of every name that is on this prayer list. Every knowing that you're a prayer family, answering Lord. God, you're a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know Lord that if we call God, on you, Jesus, that you will answer yes, our Lord. prayer. And we Do speak and we do. decree. And we declare that every name on this list, those spoken and unspoken, that they're healed, delivered, saved, and set free. Oh, God, we bombard the very gates of heaven now. Seeking tonight. you, oh, God. We Give cry strength. out to you, oh, God. In Heal every broken heart right now. God, the bereaved families. We know you're able. The family even of the late Tammy Johnson, God. Thank touch you. the Johnson family, God. Oh, touch the Glenn family, God. Lord. Touch the Wilcox family in the name of Jesus. Touch the Starks family. Thank you. Oh, God, every loss right now. Hallelujah. Touch right now, God. Heal every disease. God, if you can't do it, it cannot be, cannot done. be done. But we put our total trust and faith in you. In you and for that, oh God, tonight we give you praise. We will praise you in the middle of every situation, knowing that it's already worked out and already we done. are victors. We have the victory and it is so. It is so. Before we take it back, we'll add more to it. Oh, ah, Shonda. In Jesus', In Jesus name, we name, pray. I feel the Holy Ghost. I Thank feel God. The Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Tonight. Oh, it God. I tell so. you, I feel, I feel the presence of the Lord, Pastor. I'm telling you, God uh, is doing I, I want you to know that uh, those of you that are going through, Glory to you, that man. whatever it is you're dealing with, God is able. He's able. He's able. And he's more than the whole wide world oh, against us. Oh, God. So we're just thankful tonight. Before we get into the lesson, uh, do we have any announcements, any special announcements? Pastor? Well, we want to, to remind you that every Sunday at 11 a.m., every Sunday at 11, we're in person in the sanctuary, we're on Facebook, the conference line, we're on YouTube, and we want you to continue to tune in every Wednesday right here yes. on Facebook, YouTube, and the conference line, and then every Thursday night. With our host, Lady Cynthia Gaylord. And so we're excited. Tomorrow, the prayer warriors are on. Evangelist Salethia Johnson, Mother Jeannie Snow, Mother Dolores Modoc. They're on tomorrow night, and you do not want to miss it. I believe that if you write out, listen, I'm going to tell you to do something. Write out everything you need God to do. Be on the line tomorrow and have that paper in front of you. And oh as my, they go oh forth. My. I just believe that God is going to do exactly what you ask him to do. Because yes. that's the kind of God that he is. And then one last announcement. Uh, Sunday, August the 28th. That is going to be our Youth Sunday and our Back to School uh, giveaway like we youth do rally. every year. Our Youth Rally. And so we want you to prepare. We're going to dress casual. Look, we're going to do jeans, gym shoes, and jewels. Something. I'm going to put it together. I'll tell you Sunday. We wear and I, we're going to sparkle up, sparkle up our gym shoes, ladies. We're going to come in there sparkling with our jean skirts and jean dresses and, and everything. Everything. And so we want to be prepared for that day. And in saying that, I need everybody that would go to Walmart, go to Family Dollar, go to Dollar Tree, go uh, uh, to Myers, go wherever you yes. need to go. 
And let's buy as many supplies as we can because we want to be a blessing to our children. If you buy the supplies, I'll buy the backpacks. How about that? I'm buying the backpacks. All I need you to do is help me buy something to fill them up with. Thank well, you. Well, I, I think it's going to be an exciting Sunday. I know it is. You know you. what? And then our camp children will be graduating that day as well. And I, so I we think, want you there. I think it'll be nice as, after service, Pastor, we could go outside. You know we're doing the, it. Yeah, in the parking lot. Oh, we're barbecuing hot dogs and sausages. We're barbecuing some hot dogs. Some hot dogs and y'all know what, how we do it. potato chips and mm, pops. That sounds good. Maybe we'll have some games and some yeah. bounces for and the kids. And some popsicles. And Just some have a good time. Ice cream. A day for the youth. And Sister, some water and some juices. Yeah, watermelon <laughs> and all that good stuff. Oh, well, we're talking Sister, about a family reunion. Sister Vashti Timmons is our youth director. She so is. So I'm sure she's going to be working right beside Absolutely. you. Absolutely. put that day together. So we're just we're looking. Make it happen. We're looking forward to that. Mark your calendars, all right? I also want to, we didn't, I don't know if we had her name on the prayer list, but we want you to know, Minister Taylor, that we are praying yes, for you tonight. Pray. Yes, we we're are. We're certainly praying for God to continue to touch and heal your body and give you speedy recovery. And uh, we want to say happy birthday today. 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 July to, the 27th. Yeah, to Elder Cole. Elder Thesha Elder Cohen. Thesha Cohen's happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday God to our dear you. sweetie pie. God bless you. And you know what? I'm going to tell you. I have to say this. I love her so much. When she, uh, we decided to do camp, if I tell you everything that she just gave to camp, you would not believe it. And she even brought a bag over. We have, she gave us two bouncers. That we can use during camp. She said, just blow it up when you want to blow it up and let it down when you want to let it down. So, Elder Thisha Cohen, we celebrate you today on this day, your birthday. We love you. Well, we're going to go to the lesson tonight. Those yes, of you are. that have your Bibles, uh, your notebooks, your pens, get your Bibles out, get your Sunday school book out, your, your Bible class literature. Uh, we are on the lesson tonight entitled... Our burden bearer. God is our burden bearer. Oh my. July 31st, 2022. We're on lesson 2.4. This is lesson 2.4. God is our burden bearer. Yes, yes. God is our burden bearer. Yes, he is. And uh, our theme scripture tonight we're going to be dealing with will be found. Our focus scripture will be found in 2 Samuel chapter 17, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read uh, verses, verses 15 through verses 22. Do you have that for us, Pastor? Can you read that yeah, for us tonight? 2 Samuel, 17, 2 Samuel 17. chapter 17, verses 15 through verse 32. What, what does that say? It says, Then said Hushai unto Zadok, Mm -hmm. And to Abathur the priest, mm -hmm. thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Ahithophel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over. Lest the king be swallowed up, and all the people that are with him. Yes. Read. Now Jonathan. And Ahima stayed at Enrajah. You all, please forgive me for the pronunciations. For they might not be seen to come into the city. And a wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. But they both they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in Behurim, which had a well in his court, whither they went down. Yes. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon, and the thing was not known. Mm -hmm. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find him, they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus hath Ahithophel counseled against you. That, that's it. Stop right there. 
We will read. Well, go ahead. Read verse 20. Then David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan. By the morning light, there lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. Now, this lesson that we're dealing with tonight is very interesting. The title of the lesson is Our Burden Bearer. And the lesson tonight, Pastor, is really a lesson that deals with uh, betrayal. Mm -hmm. It deals with pain. It deals with being hurt. It deals with offense. It deals with bearing the burdens that, that we experience in life as a result of uh, our interaction with people, our relationship to mm -hmm. others. But what, what the story is really dealing with here is Absalom, who was uh, a son, he was the son of King David. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, Absalom was one of his favorite sons. Mm -hmm. Absalom was King David's, one of King David's favorite sons. Now, an issue arose there in the palace. Absalom's half-brother Ammon, mm -hmm. Ammon raped his sister Tamara. And as a result of it, Absalom became very upset and distraught uh, with his half-brother. And he was angry with David, his father, who was not only his father, but who was also the king. Correct. And he became distraught with his father because of the way his father handled what his half-brother did to his sister Tamara. Right. He was angry with David. Uh, he was upset with his father, upset with the king. And he was to a point where he even wanted to overthrow his father. Wow. He even wanted to see his father dead mm -hmm. uh, because he didn't agree with the way his father handled uh, the handling of the situation between what happened between his half-brother and his sister Tamara. So let's start in our lesson commentary. For those of you that have your Sunday school literature, uh, your, your, your Sunday school book, Pastor Laura, would you read our first caption for us here? It's called, Absalom Sought to Kill His Father. Would you read that for us? Absalom was the rebellious son of his father, David, the beloved king of Israel. Absalom hated his half-brother Amnon for Amnon. raping yeah. his sister Tamar. When David failed to deal with the horrendous behavior of Amnon, Absalom began to plot his revenge against his brother. When Amnon was drinking wine and probably impaired from his drinking, Absalom ordered his servants to kill Amnon, taking justice into his own hands. As a result of the fallout, Absalom went into exile at Geshur, where he, Geshur, where he spent the next three years. Well, he had offended his father because uh, in, the, in, in the, the caption here, it says that he decided to take matters into his own hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, uh, he had to go into hiding. He went into uh, a hiding uh, for the next three years. He went into exile mm -hmm. because of his, uh, his vagrant uh, act against uh, the orders of what the king had already prescribed. Absolutely as punishment or how the king was going to deal with uh, with his son or uh, uh, Absalom's brother, Amon. Mm -hmm. So he's in hiding, he's in exile for three years. Read the next caption. Eventually, David allowed Absalom to return. He allows him to return. Mm -hmm. He allows him to come home. Read. Even though they did not see each other for an additional two years, mm -hmm. Absalom was finally reunited with his father, but it was a reunion destined for trouble. He was he was being reunited. <laughs> wow. Now watch this. He had been reunited with his father, mm -hmm. but deep down on the inside of him, he had still not forgiven Absolutely. his father for not being more harsh mm -hmm. in the way that he handled the situation of his sister Tamar being raped right. by his half-brother Amon. All right, read on. Absalom began to gain influence among wow. the men of Israel. Isn't that some, he started gaining influence. Isn't that something? That's how, uh -huh. That's how the devil does. Absolutely. When the enemy gets upset with you or he wants to come against you or attack you, he'll always try to gather uh, uh, an army or people against you. That's right. You know, that's what happened in heaven. 
when, when Lucifer got beside himself and decided that he wanted to be like God or as important as God, mm -hmm. he didn't stop there, but he started gaining Talking influence and gathering, and gathering the angels on his side. Mm -hmm. You know that, That's how the devil does. It is, and it's, it's interesting because a lot of times you'll see it even in church. When people get disgruntled in the church and they decided they're ready to leave or they want to go to another ministry, uh, they don't just, a lot of times they don't just go but they want to take others with take them. Take others with them. They get talking. Yeah, they start yeah. talking. And, and I'm saying that to somebody. Don't you be influenced. That's right. By people in your ministry or in your church that are disgruntled, that want to come to you and try to sow discord and try to uh, create an atmosphere for you to try to get on board with them. That's nothing. The devil will always try to gather up forces. That's it. And it does nothing but cause confusion. And the Bible says God is not the author of He's confusion. He's not the author of confusion. Right. Read on. And he sought to assert the throne of David, eventually locating to Hebron, Relocating to Hebron. and declaring himself to be king. He goes to Hebron <laughs> wow. and declares himself to be king. Now, you know what? He was, he was out, so out of order because look, David, David had already promised the throne. To, uh -huh. He had already promised his throne to his son. Prior to this boy proclaiming himself to be the king. Wow. Isn't that something? It's amazing. That's amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> he, he had, look, he had already promised his throne, Pastor. Wow. Already promised the throne. Already. My God. And now here he is going to proclaim himself to be the king. Read the next caption. What does it say? Accompanying Absalom in his rebellion was Ahithophel. Now, now watch this. Ahithophel. Previously the counselor Ahithophel, to David. Ahithophel was David's friend. <laughs> he was a oh, very close. My, my, my. He was a very close a friend, friend to David. Isn't that something? And now his son has gotten with his best friend Ahithophel, his counselor. Wow. And persuaded him to betray David and to get on his side, and, and they're going to overthrow the king. Read. Ahithophel betrayed David and began to serve as counselor to Absalom in Hebron as Absalom sought to kill his father and fully take the throne. Absalom sought Ahithophel's counsel on how to take his father and his mighty men. Now, now stop there. I just, wow. I just, stop there because I just thought of something I need to share with you. I, I just thought of it. David had promised the throne to his son, Solomon. I should have made that clear. Right. He already promised the throne to his son, Solomon, the great king, Solomon. Mm -hmm. He succeeded David after David uh, passed on and went on. Solomon then became the king. Right. But David had promised the throne to Solomon way before this young man, Ahithophel, decides to proclaim wow. him, himself as king. And now he's gathering David's close friends, Ahithophel, one of his closest friends, his counselor, you know, if to he, turn against him. If he could gather them to turn against David that easily, they were never really friends. Oh. You have to think about that. If it's easy for you to go against your friend like that, you were never really a friend. Mm. Think about or, it. Or somebody that you were in close covenant with. Absolutely. In close fellowship with. It's not easy. You no. Know, you were never really a, a friend. It's not an easily broken core. No. No. Because, you know, because when you start talking about a friend and a counselor, and somebody that's close to you, you got to learn that there are times that, that people that are close to you may do things that may hurt you or may uh, 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 cause you to become offended. or But, but you, you, you just... You don't break the ranks of friendship that no, easily. Not if it's a real friendship. Not when, well, not when we are when we have ties. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, yes. strong ties. We learn how to forgive, and That's we learn. Right. You know what? There's a word that that people uh, 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 don't know how to appreciate like they used to, and there's one word. It's called loyalty. Oh my! <laughs> Isn't oh. that something? That word loyalty. People don't have that loyalty like they used to. No, they don't. Mm. Come on, read on. Ahithophel gave Absalom a shrewd and tactically smart plan to pursue David immediately. Mm -hmm. But God had another plan. Mm. God had Hushai in place. Hushai. Hushai. 
who sh who shia in uh -huh. place ready to enact the plan listen he comes back wow. he's still he's still not completely forgiven his father and then he gathers people to help him in his plot to overthrow his father to overthrow the king <laughs> my god listen Holy. listen people of god there are going to be times in your life that you're going to have enemies that are going to gather around you and encompass you. Mm -mm. I'm talking to somebody. While we speaking right now, they're family members. They're, they're so-called friends that are, that are jealous of you. A lot of it's jealousy. Yeah, a lot of it's jealousy. A lot of it's jealousy. But people are, are gathering uh, uh, allies against you and trying to do things against you, Ooh. even on your job. But guess what? The caption said, but God had Man. another plan. Come on, God. <laughs> go go to Psalms 27. I want you to look at uh, verses 2 through verses 3. God had another plan. I love this. Psalms 27, verses 2 and verse 3. What does it say? When the wicked, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, uh -huh. came upon me to eat came up my flesh. Came upon me to do what? Eat up my flesh. Eat up my flesh. To tear me up, to tear me down, to come against me. What happened? They stumbled and the Bible they says they fell. They stumbled and they fell. You ain't got to worry about your enemies and <laughs> folk that's trying to get folk against you and get a posse against you and trying to turn everybody against you. You ain't got to worry about them family members that's talking about you and trying to turn other family members against you. God has a plan. God. God. He's in the midst of it all the when time. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Mm -hmm. Read, read. Though and whole should have kept against me. A bunch of folks. <laughs> <laughs> whole lot of people. Whole lot of people. <laughs> Should what? My heart should encamp around should me. against me. My uh -huh. heart shall not fear. Uh -huh. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. Mm. Isn't that something? Mm. I'm that's, confident. That's saying something right there. So you ain't got. You don't, have, you don't have to worry about folk when they try to come oh, against no. you and try to get a group and posses against you and try to raise up against you. They will. I'm telling you. I'm talking to the believers tonight, to the body of Christ. I'm telling you, they will stumble and they will fall. Yes, Listen to this, and you hear me. Remember what I said. You will always have more for you than you will against always, you. Always, always. You always, always have almost for you. You will always have more for you than you will against you. You remember that. Amen. All right, let's move to our next caption. Our next caption says. Hosea sent a warning to David. Hosea sent a warning to David. Read that caption for us, Pastor. What does that say? David made a shrewd tactical move by sending Hosea back to Absalom to pledge his loyalty to Absalom. He sends Hosea back, tell him you go over there to Absalom <laughs> and make him think that uh, you you uh, oh, are you, you're part of his uh, coup, his mm -hmm. takeover crew, and, and pledge your loyalty to it. But you, mm -hmm. you keep me posted. Wow. On what's going on. Read on. David recognized that having a loyal subject back within Absalom's inner circle would open to David lines of tactical communication from his enemy. Mm -hmm. The move was a brilliant, preemptive strategy on David's part. Greater than his tactical shrewdness, though, was the fact that it provided a loyal subject through whom David could work his will on David's behalf. Mm -hmm. Regardless of our human intellect and abilities, we sometimes tend to think only strategic, strategically on a humanistic level while missing the supernatural divine level through which God is accomplishing his work on, on our, our behalf. behalf. God is trying to work it out. Sometimes you, we, you know we get what I, too smart. You know us. what I get out of that? You know what I get out of that? Listen mm. to me. You know what I get out of that? God is strategically placed individuals in your life that he has placed there for a purpose. Oh, yes. And it's a strategic purpose that individuals are in your life 
And God is going to use those individuals, in spite of all of those that have turned against you, walked away, talked about oh, you, did whatever Jesus. they did. God had placed some individuals in your life that he has placed there for a purpose. And I said that to say this. Don't take good friends. Come on. Now you're talking. You're talking. Don't take great relationships uh -huh. with people in, that love you and that have been there. Don't take that for granted. That's right. Don't people, you dare. People that have been there for you. People that, that, that have your back. People that will go to the extra mile with you. Don't take those relationships don't do for it. granted. Don't you do it. Don't take it for granted. And don't let anybody come and whisper things in your ear against people that you are in covenant with. That's it. People that you know that you are that you have uh, uh, blood ties with or that you have That's right. soul ties with. Because I believe God had placed them there strategically, Pastor, for a reason. That's right. And you know what? God has given us uh, 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 a discernment. You should be able to, and a lot of times, you know, I guess we get so caught up until we miss some things, but we should be able to discern when people are against us. I'm telling you, Amen. what do they say? Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. You better watch them. <laughs> you better know. You don't just turn them away, but you know who, you, who, the, who they are and what they're doing. Mm. They're on assignment, and God is going to prove that their assignment is not their assignment. It's not, it's it's not, not going to pass. It's, it's not, not going to work. work. It's not going to work. Because, gonna work. Because God has a plan. A plan. Isn't that something? Look at, look at uh, 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 Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, when God has a plan. Romans 831. 831. What does that say? Read it for us. What does that say? What shall we then say to these things? To these things, uh-huh. If God be for us. Listen, if God be <laughs> for us. How many of you know that he's for you tonight? Ooh, yes, he is. Yes, how many of you believe that he's for you? I know it. I know I it. I know he is. I know he's for me. I know he's with me. If God be for us. See, you don't have to worry about who's against you when God is for you. That's right. If God be for us, what? Who can be against us? Who? <laughs> Somebody ought to type that in and just say, who? <laughs> if God be for us, who? Who can be against us? <laughs> My God, but those people that are in your life that God had placed there strategically and that you know that you've got yes. soul ties and yes. spiritual connections to, keep those people close to keep you. Keep them close. Stay close. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. Don't you let people talk against your pastor to you. That's right. Uh-oh. Somebody got mad. Don't let don't you let people come. Listen, don't cause you know what the devil do? The devil will uh, let them come and whisper garbage in your ear so that when the man or the woman of God get up, you can't receive. Can't even receive. But if God be for you. Blessing. You miss out on what God trying to do. If God be for you, he is more than the whole oh world God. against you. Yes, if is. God be for you, who? <laughs> I like that. Praise the Lord. You know, one time, Pastor, I was on a job, and uh, they they told the, the the supervisor he was trying to take my 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 space away from me, and I had listened to a tape that bitch he was trying to take my shift. I had a Monday through Friday shift and weekends off because I went to church on Sunday. Right. And the supervisor was a Jehovah Witness, and he was trying to bump me out of my shift. And uh, I went in the office, and, and he said to me, he said, well, we're getting ready to move you off your sh off your uh, 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 day shift, your Monday through Friday day shift, and we're going to put you on afternoons and every other weekend. And guess what? I said, who? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I, you. <laughs> yeah, did he say you? But I said, who? <laughs> I had just listened to Bishop T.D. Jakes preach a message on this text talking about if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? But I want you to know, that that I, I I'm telling you that word who came out I said it but before it was all over do you know they gave me back my afternoon my day shift wow my Monday through Friday and every weekend they off do it every and, time. and they fired they fired him they let him go mm. who <laughs> somebody typed that in just they say who it. oh they typing it in <laughs> thank yes, you Jesus. yes if God be for you who who can be against you let's read our next our next caption. Our next caption we are moving to, it talks about 
Well, you know, before I go there, let me let me let me read this. Go to Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse fifteen. Who? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be hollering that all night. Second Chronicles twenty, verse fifteen. If the Lord be for you, who can be who? Edison, the gas company, who? IRS, who? <laughs> Past the Lord want me to move on. She's tapping. No. Yeah, she's trying to get me to move on. No. I want you to say whatever God is telling you to say. Second Chronicles 20 and 15. Read yes. that, baby. What does it say? And it said, Hearken ye all Judah and uh -huh. ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yes. And thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed. Listen, yeah. listen, listen. <laughs> whatever it is you're going through, whoever it is that's against you, trying to come against oh, you, Jesus, whatever forces it. have rose up against oh, you, Jesus. on your job, in your home, wherever, family members, friends, who? Glory to your Read, name. what does that say? Read be not afraid nor Don't dismayed. be afraid and don't be dismayed. By reason of this great multitude. Oh, by all these folk that's trying to come against you. Read on. For the battle is not yours. Woo! <laughs> it's, but it's God's. The battle is not yours. But God's. The battle is God's. It ain't not your yours. fight. You it's think? not your battle. You trying to fight something that don't belong to you. Mm. We got to move on. We got to mm. move on. Here's our next caption. David and his men escaped. Read that for us, Pastor. What does that say? David and his men escaped. Thanks to Hushai's advance warning of Absalom's plan, David and his men outmaneuvered Absalom's army. Mm -hmm. They were prepared and able to take evasive as well as preparatory action for future battle engagements. David and his men regrouped and organized for battle against Absalom and those who were aligned with him. David's troops went out against them and engaged them in the forest of Ephraim, where the insurgents lost 20,000 men. They lost? 20,000 <laughs> Isn't that something? Woo, read on. It is important to know that believers should be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Got to be sensitive. Listen, got to be sensitive. Now, y'all stay with me. Now, here's where it gets good. We've got to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God. You got to be led by the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Read. Allowing them to take evasive action, avoiding the ravages of their spiritual enemy. Prayer, the word of God, commitment, faithfulness to the house of God, and other spiritual disciplines prepare us for the spiritual battles ahead and empower us to go on the offensive against Satan and his minions. Now stay there, stay there. If you're going to be successful, believer, in this walk with the Lord, if you're going to be successful in your uh, uh, walk of salvation, you first got to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord. You got to allow God to direct your paths. Yes. Everything you do, every step you make, every move that you make, every right. uh, every decision you make, you've got to be sensitive enough to say, you know what, before I make that decision, before I do it, I'm going to be still and I'm going to wait, wait and I'm going to seek God for direction. Yes, Lord. Look at uh, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. See, that's our problem. We get ahead of ourselves. And we don't take time to pray and listen to God and allow God to direct us. Mm -hmm. Read, what does that say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all in thy ways. In not some of your ways. In all thy ways. Not some of your ways. All. But in all of your ways. Acknowledge do what? him. Acknowledge him. And he shall and direct our he paths. he shall direct your path. So you first got to be sensitive to the Lord. Now watch this, to the, oh, God, to the voice of the Lord. But here in the caption, it says, watch this, prayer, the word of God, commitment and faithfulness to the house of God. Isn't that something? Prayer, the word of God, and faithfulness and commitment to the house yes, of God. Lord God. 
So I want to deal with those three issues. Uh -oh. I want to deal with that. I want to deal with prayer. I want to deal with the word. And I want to deal with our faithfulness and our commitment to the house of the Lord. Are we freezing? No, we're good. All right, we're good. Let, let's look at this for a minute. Go to Luke chapter 18, verse number one. See, because a lot of times things go wrong in your life and you're wondering why. It's because you haven't been doing what God prescribed in his word for you to do. Oh, my God. And you wonder why things are going the way that they're going. We were just talking to Mother Jackson about this the other day. Remember? Mm -hmm. We were on the phone and she was saying that she was talking to some individuals and she was telling them a lot of times, uh, Mother Elnora Jackson, God bless you, I know you're watching. You, she was saying that a lot of times the reason that people go through things and they don't understand why they're going through it is because they have not been fully committed to what God's word prescribes. Wow. And you wonder why. You have to, you have to go through the entire process, when I say that step by step with the instructions or directions that God gives, in other words, you have to follow his word. Here it is. His word. Here it is, Luke 18 and 1. What does that say? And he spake a parable unto them to this end. What? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. You have got to You've develop to. a prayer life. You have to. You've got to have a prayer life. You've got to spend some time with the Lord in prayer. You have to. And, and while I'm on that note, let me say this. Every Wednesday at 12 noon, we are there at the church oh, yes. on our faces. I'm telling you, we, me and Mother, J and, and Mother Jackson and several other of us, Mother Modoc, Mother Modoc, 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 several of us, we yes. lay on our face mm. and pray. Queen and, and Denise. And, and, some, and, right some, and some of you all don't take advantage of that prayer time. Even now, I think Evangelist Butts and... and uh, Minister Taylor, yes. they have, what is that? 5 a.m. prayer every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Mother Snowden is every there at Wednesday. Noon. They're there praying. 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 You have got to spend some time in prayer. You have to. As much time, you know what, if we spend as Ooh, much time in yes, prayer God. as we do on Facebook and TV and all this other stuff, I'm telling you, you'd be unstoppable. Oh, Jesus. So the believer has to have a constant prayer life. Got to have. The next thing is the word. You got to get into that word of God. Yes, Lord. You got to get into that word. Look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. You got to get into that word. You got to pick up that Bible. Don't just carry it around in your arms. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but get it in your heart. Mm -hmm. What does verse 15 say, Pastor? Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show thyself approved, approved unto God. Get that word down in you. Study the word. Oh my. Read that Bible. Read it. I've Read encouraged it. those of you uh, that are members of Power of Faith, I've encouraged you over and over again. Order the Sunday school book and study it during the week. And then when Wednesday come, when we start on the lesson, you'll be right there with us. Right there with us. You'll know where we're at and you can already be a little abreast and, 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 and aware of what we're talking about on that particular uh, Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Get that word of God in you. Study that word of God. That's and right. there's something about it that when you pray and you agree with God's word in your prayer, Concerning what you're going through, God supernaturally does some things in your life. Yes, I'm telling does. you, I'm telling you, if prayer and the gospel can't do it, it can't be done. That's right. And here's the last point, because he said the word of God, prayer, the word of God. And then the caption says commitment and faithfulness to the house of God. Oh, my. Oh, now here's where it gets deep. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 25. Go there, Pastor. Because a lot of y'all now, you're not, you don't come to church. You won't come. You use the pandemic as an excuse 
You still act like you're afraid to go out. You're scared to be in service. You're scared to come to church. No, you're scared to go, go to church. You're not scared to go anywhere else. Yeah, they're scared to come to church. You're using that as an excuse. And it's nothing but a, a tactic of the enemy to keep you yes, out of the house of God. Yes, it is. I don't care how much you watch it on Facebook. I don't care how much you listen to it on the conference line. There is still something that you gain when you come into the presence of yes, the Lord. When you come into God's house. There's something that you gain from being in the house that you can't get from watching it on Facebook. My God. There's something that you can't get from listening on the conference line. you got to be there. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you wonder why things are not working out the way they should. is because you are not fully following the prescriptions that God has prescribed for you. For you to be successful in your walk with the Lord. My God. You got to listen. You got to come to church. That's right. And there's no excuse. Look at Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. What does that say? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together. Wow. You are not supposed to be forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. There's something that happens when we come into the house of God. You can't get it off Facebook. You can't get it off the conference line. You can't get it off YouTube. You've got to present yourself in the house of God. David said, I was glad when glad they said, when they said, unto, said me, unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. My God. So, so I, I just, I just had to deal with that. Cause see, <laughs> see the devil, the devil is trying to get us in this trap. Where we feel that we don't have to go. We don't have to go. Mm -hmm. I, I can stay home and watch it and send my tithes. That's right. Because like you used to always say, the time may come again where you won't be able to get to where the house of the Lord. It may come again where we have to, you know, shut the church doors and everybody have to go back in the house and, and be on lockdown. So now that we have the opportunity to get to the house of the Lord, let's get to the house of the Lord. Don't don't let the devil trick you. Don't let him do it. And cause you to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And then when things start going wrong in your life and you wonder why and you wonder what's going on and you wonder why you feel like God has forsaken you. Listen, it's because you are not following all of the tenements that he has prescribed. My God. He wants you to come into the house of the Lord. He wants you to be there. i never forget this, and i got to move on because our time is getting away. But I'll never forget this. We went to the hospital one time to visit an individual, and, and, and the individual, we were praying uh, for the individual, and they said, I don't feel that God loves me anymore. I don't feel that, you remember that? I don't feel that, I don't know what I did. If it seemed like God, I wanted to say to that individual, do you think it might have started uh, when you stopped going to church? Every time you're on your feet, you don't go to church. No, I wanted to tell him, do you feel like God is forsaking you and that he don't care about you anymore and you don't know what? I wanted to just ask him, do you think it started when you start, decided that you was going to stop going to church? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Maybe that's where it started, the disconnect. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't, God wasn't disconnecting himself. <laughs> you disconnected you, yourself. You, you disconnected yourself from God. Amen. Oh my, come on now, we got, we got to go. All right, here's our next point. David's burden of betrayal and his son's revenge. Let's read that caption, Pastor. What does that say? Betrayal is a heavy burden to bear. That was a burden for David yes. to be betrayed oh, yes. by, by his, mm -hmm. one of his favorite sons. Read. Mm -hmm. Never is it pleasant to experience the betrayal of a friend or acquaintance, but to be betrayed by a family member is a pain that defies description. Such uh, was the pain and burden David must have borne at the betrayal he experienced through Absalom's rebellion. Mm. Despite the burden David bore, however, he explicitly ordered his soldiers to deal gently with Absalom. Mm. And the king commanded Joab and Ibishai and Ittai saying deal gently for my sake with the young man even with Absalom mm -hmm. and all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom it seemed clear that David expected them to spare Absalom's life yes, and, and bring, bring him alive to the king such was not to be Absalom's end what, however watch what happened to Absalom Absalom's long beautiful hair, a great source of pride to him, 
became entangled in a tree during the battle. While they're in the battle, oh, he's, he's on his horse, he's uh -huh. on his beast, and he, he runs and his hair, his hair is long and it gets entangled, mm -hmm. it gets entangled uh, uh, in the tree, uh, in the tree. Mm -hmm. and, and read the rest of that. And his beast ran from beneath his, him. His horse runs from under him and he's Leaving hung. him hanging by his hair. Killed him, killed him instantly. Read mm -hmm. on. Despite David's order, Joab took the occasion as opportunity to slay the rebellious enemy of the king. Word of Absalom's death surely must have increased David's burden and pain exponentially. Now, you know, David, he's going through so much here. Yeah, yeah. He's so much. Pastor, he's going through his son betraying him. Uh, he's going through his best friends now betraying him. He's going through possibly the guilt of feeling that maybe he should have done more mm -hmm. to avenge Tamar's rape by her half brother. I mean, you know, he's got all of these emotions running through his head. He's tried to make amends uh, with with Absalom. He reunites with him, only to find out that Absalom's uh, 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 apology was not genuine. He still My wanted Lord. to overthrow his father, and all of this is going on. And then. Uh, God intervenes and gives David the victory over Absalom, but then Absalom is killed. Wow. And it doesn't matter what the issue was with Absalom and his father that was still his son. That was still his son. So you know he still had to experience and felt pain and bitterness as a result of, of what has now happened to his son. Now you talk about a mountain of trials troubles and tribulations my god but watch this look at that let's read the next part of that caption what does it say but david knew where to turn for encouragement david and knew, help he knew where to turn for encouragement and help my yes, god yes he did he knew where to turn read he could not control the circumstances that suddenly came against him but he could control his reaction to those circumstances. Mm. David knew his hope and strength were found in the Lord. Found where? In the Lord. In the Lord. Look at Psalms 121 and verse number 1. I love that. David knew where to turn for encouragement he and knew. help. Psalms 121, verse number 1. What does that say, Pastor? I will lift up my eyes. I'm going to lift my eyes. To the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I'm going to lift my eyes I'm, to the hills. You say it every week. From which cometh my help. What do I say? All of my help. All. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Let's move on. Read on, Pastor. I cannot always control what happens to me. That's our next caption. Despite Absalom's out of control rebellion and effort to usurp the throne of his father, still David extended love, mercy, and grace toward him. Mm. However, although David wanted to sh spare Absalom and possibly rehabilitate him, Absalom's outrageous actions brought their own retribution upon his head as Joab killed him against the wishes of David. When we fail to control our response to life circumstances, we risk acting in ways that will invite the judgment of God against us. You see that? Absolutely. You see that in his in his own mm -hmm. uh, his own attitude and his own uh, uh, outrageous attitude toward his father created that atmosphere where he lost his life. He was hung, and Absolutely. Then, after being hung. Uh, uh, then Joab kills him. Mm -hmm. He's hanging from his hair. Jesus. But it was his A own horrible way, to die. horrible way to die. But it was his own actions that brought this this uh, this evil uh, uh, death upon his life. You know, you can you can be you can act sometimes so out of character mm -hmm. and so out of the will of God that you have to suffer the consequences. That's right. Sometimes God allow you to suffer the consequences of your actions. Oh, yes. Of your rebellion and your disobedience. Read. We cannot control many circumstances of life, but we can control how we react in the midst of anger, hurt, or disappointment. As someone once observed, when things go wrong, don't go with them. I love that. When, when things, things go wrong. When things go wrong. Don't go with them. Don't go wrong with them. That's it. In other words, don't allow what you're dealing with 
cause you to start doing the wrong thing. That's right. Because the devil will try to make you feel justified. Oh, that ain't going right. Things mm -hmm. ain't going right. God ain't forgot about me, so I might well go on. And... But then look what happens. My God. Then you have all of these retributions that you may have to experience as a result of it. My God. But watch this. This is what I love about uh, this caption. It says, David extended love, mercy, and, and grace. grace. And grace. Toward Absalom, even in the midst of what Absalom was trying to do to him. How many of you know tonight that it doesn't matter what they're trying to do to you, what they're trying to inflict upon you, you've got to forgive others. That's right. Matter of fact, look at that in Luke chapter 11, verse 4. We got, we got to learn how to have a forgiving spirit. Mm. Even though they're trying to do us in, Pastor. Even though. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse number 4. What does that say? And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Stop right there. In other words, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against, against us. us. Isn't that something? That's what that really you means. We have to do it. You we got to do forgive. it. We got to do it. We got to do it. See, it's simple. If, if, if Absalom had just forgiven his father, just forgive his father and went to him as a man and said, Father, I didn't, I didn't appreciate what you did. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't avenge my sister like I thought you should. Right. But he let that rage just and continue to build, build and build. build and look at the result. And that's what happened. Look at the result. Let's read our next caption. What does it say? God will bear the burdens that we surrender to him. Uh, Psalm 51 records a prayer of David during a time of great distress and anguish at the treachery of a friend. Some believe David was writing concerning the betrayal of his son Absalom, but others believe it was written when David was running from King Saul. Regardless of when David penned this psalm, it surely must reflect the kind of pain and suffering he endured at the betrayal of his own son. Mm -hmm. Where David cried out to the Lord for mercy, as he often did, living the constant faith in God that gave him continuing solace and strength. Mm. In his extreme anguish, David knew no source, no source of, of help greater than the mighty hand of God. Mm. He needed divine strength in order to face his betrayers face to face. Look at look at First Peter chapter five. Look at chapter five, verse seven. We're gonna cut through some of this tonight. We're gonna cut through the lesson because our time is getting first away Peter. from us. But I want you to look at First Peter chapter five and verse seven. Because I, I love what this caption is saying. David realized that in the midst of what he was going through, he realized that he needed divine strength in needed. order, it says, to face his portrayers face to face. Oh, that's something. All of the stuff he was dealing with, all of his burdens, he had to realize that his help and his hope was in God. That's right. Look at what First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says. Read that. Casting all your care upon him. Not some of your care. All of them. But casting all of your cares upon him, upon him, whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever it is, upon him. For he careth for you. For he careth he cares for, for every one of you. You. All of us. Wow. Let's read a little more. David's, David laments. David's pain emanated from knowing the deep hurt of betrayal. Had it been an enemy from the battlefield. He would have been able to deal with mm. it, but he did not consider his adversary to be an enemy, but an equal, a companion, and a familiar friend. Family his, member. Yes, his anguish. Friend. Was, uh huh. His anguish was driving him to desire a way of escape, perhaps a place of solitude in a wilderness where he could find shelter from the windy storm and tempest of his difficult times. Would you read uh, Psalms fifty-five? Get that. And then we're going to come to a close. I just want to, I want to read this and then we're going to end with one last verse of scripture. But I want you to see this. Because see, a lot of times when, when, it, when, when our enemies and our foes and, and individuals start coming against us, sometimes it's the least person that we ex expected to come from and we get all bent out of shape. But I, I want you to get this. If you don't get anything else tonight, people are people. Oh yeah. So sometimes we expect too much from individuals. Yeah. You know, that's why the Bible tells us this. Put no don't put confidence in the flesh. Don't do it. Don't put confidence in the flesh. 
Because men will let you down. They're human. That's right. But when you have a confidence in God and you have that personal relationship with God, it doesn't matter what they do. No matter how close they are to me. But when I have that un, unrockable, unchangeable, unmovable relationship with God, come hell or high water, come friend or foe. Absolutely. I can stand. Look at Psalms 55, verses 12 through 14. Read that. For it was not an enemy that now, reproached now this, me. Now this is David talking. He right. said it wasn't my enemy. It wasn't my enemy. Then I could have borne it. I could have handled it if it was somebody that I knew was my enemy. That's right. Neither, neither was it he that hated me. Somebody that, that, I, that I knew that hated me. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man, my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. Mm. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Mm. Is that something? Just stop there. That's, that's good. <laughs> it was my... He, he, and here, he's talking about... Uh, 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 he's talking about his counselor. Mm -hmm. He's talking about his friend. A man that he uh, uh, had... A hit the fail. A man that he had confidence in but David said in spite of all that in spite first Peter 5 and 7 he says casting all of our cares all upon him why because he cares about us I, I just I just have a word for somebody tonight that's going through it doesn't matter who it is that's coming against you because you know what sometimes I remember a couple of years ago, a movie, you remember that movie was called Sleeping with the Enemy. Oh, <laughs> she was definitely sleeping with the enemy. She was, her own husband was her enemy. Own husband. Casting all of your cares Cast on him. him. For he careth for you. Here's our last point and we got to close. Read that, Pastor. I will cast my cares upon the Lord. The foremost key to successful Christian living is maintaining an abiding faith. An abiding faith where? In the God of our salvation. 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 Not in people, not in men. That's right. Read. Understanding that our Christian walk is not a solitary undertaking, but walking together with the Lord. We must develop an intense determination to maintain our faith in Christ and continually look to him for the ongoing sustenance we need for Christian life. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and I close. And I want to see those of you that wasn't in service on Sunday. I want to see you Sunday. You know who you are. You wasn't in church. If you weren't working or you weren't dead or in the hospital, you don't have a good excuse. I want to see you in church Sunday. I got a word. The Lord gave me a word for the house on Sunday. I need every member of the Power of Faith Church to be there. And don't get scared. I'm not going to beat up on you about not coming. It's just something that I want to share with you Sunday. I want you to press your way. Because we make time for everything else. But it's time for us to follow the prescriptions that God has set up in his word for us. To be successful in our walk with the Lord. Read that last verse of scripture and we got to go. What verse? Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Uh, where did I say? Let me see. I got to go back. Chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Okay. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Yes. That if we ask anything according to his this, will, he is heareth us. The, listen, this is the confidence mm -hmm. that we have in him. We've got a confidence in Isn't him. Isn't that something? That if we ask anything. Anything. What? Anything according to his will, he heareth us. It's got to be in his will. It has to be in his will. Got to be in his will. Read. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. If you're going through with people and your enemies and things are going on in your life, we have a confidence. We can be confident in the fact that whatever it is we're dealing with, we can ask and he will hear us. And he'll avenge us. Yes, he will. Just like he did, David. Yes, sir. You're going to get he the will. victory through every situation, through every problem. 
through every issue, God wants to give you the victory. Yes, he does. He wants you to let him be your let him be your burden bearer. Let him bear the burden. Our job is to do the following. Thank you, Jesus. His job is to do the leading. I like that. That's good. <laughs> His job is to do the leading. Our job is to do the following. And then we used to sing a song that said, Where he leads me, I will follow. You yes, that? yes, I do. Where he leads me, I will follow. My brother Alan, he probably remember that song. We used to sing it in Sunday school. Then the song said, I'll go with him through the valley. I'll go with him through the valley. I'm going to stop. Listen, if you've enjoyed this word tonight, I want you to sow into the kingdom. I want you to sow a seed tonight. But before we, before I go there, let me, let me slow down because I want to invite those that are listening. If you're listening, if you're viewing it, you're not saved. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin. I want you to just right where you are, where you're viewing, where you're listening, to confess your sins. Tell the Lord that you are a sinner in need of his saving grace. And he can begin the beautiful process of salvation in your life. Confess your sin. That's the first step. Repent. And don't stop there. But I want you to go on yes, and be baptized yes. in the in water. Completely oh, emerged. Not somebody yes, sprinkled yes, something yes. on you, yes. but completely emerged in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and allow the Lord to fill you with the precious baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. And if you don't understand everything that I'm talking about as it relates to baptism or as it relates to receiving the Holy Ghost, just call our church office. Area code 586-427-4875. I promise you, we'll call you back. Oh, absolutely. And we'll work with you to receive the totality of what God has in store for you as it pertains to salvation. Let's pray tonight, Pastor, for those yes. that are watching, those that are listening. Father, we thank you tonight. This is the day that you've made. We shall rejoice and yes, be glad Lord. in thank it. You, we Jesus. thank you for such a powerful and encouraging word on tonight. Oh, God. God, knowing that we can cast our cares on you because you care for us, God. Ground. And it's this day, God, that we cast everything on you, oh God. We know, yes, God, Lord. that you love us and you are protector you are and our provider. Bearer. Yes, you Lord. are the burden bearer, God. And we give it all to you. And we praise you in the midst of what we're going through. God, I ask that you would touch those right now that are not saved, God. Shandu give them the right Messiah. now, God. Give them, oh God, I ask that you would touch them. Save them, oh God. Give them the gift of the in Holy the Ghost in the name of Jesus. Touch their minds, oh, God. Speak God. to them, oh God. Oh, my Let God. them know, hallelujah, that you're the only way. Let them come to the altar running saying, what must I do to be saved? And we thank you for it now. Heal, oh God. Heal. Deliver, oh God. Set free and deliver. Set free and save. And it is so. It is so. Before in we take Jesus it back, name. we'll add more to it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, I believe that somebody just got touched. Somebody's life is taking a dramatic change after the word and after this prayer tonight. I want you to believe it. I want you to receive it. God has so much in store for you. Way more than this whole world could offer. Way more than anything in this life could ever offer you. I'm telling you, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to challenge everybody that's listening tonight. I want everybody that's watching. Some of you watch every Wednesday and you never give. Some of you watch every Wednesday and you never sow. But I'm going to challenge you tonight. If you're dealing with something, you're going through something, I want you to sow into the word tonight. I want you to sow into this life-changing Yoke destroying word that have gone forth tonight. I want you to sow into it because I want you to believe that what you're dealing with, be it family, friends, your job, your co workers, your enemies, your neighbors, whatever it is, I want you to sow because I believe that the seed that you sow tonight is going to break the back of the enemy. I believe that. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I want you to do oh, this. No. I'm, I'm going to ask for an uncommon seed. I'm going to ask for a $25 seed. Now, that's not a lot, is it? That's not a lot at all. I want you to sow an uncommon $25 oh, seed tonight that's going to break the back of the enemy. 
Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just respond. Just respond. The prophet said it. You just get up and start responding. Don't even think about it. Because if you think about it, the devil's going to try to talk you yes. out of it. But I want you to respond tonight. And you watch God move in Jesus' God name. God is going to move. Pastor, tell them how they can sow. You can sow through our cash app, which is dollar sign, P-O-F-M-I-C, through our PayPal, P-O-F-M-I-N-I-N-T, at gmail.com. You can mail it to the Power of Faith or bring it. Power of Faith Ministries, 24502 Campbell, Warren, Michigan, 48089. Or if you're paying by credit, by debit, or Zelle, the number is 313-574-3661. Listen, get to the phone, get to the cash app on your computer, get your envelope with your stamp on it, call 313-574-3661. But here is the opportunity for you to sow on good ground. Sow into your future. So into what you believe in God to do for you tonight. And I guarantee you, I'm telling you, before this month is over. Ah, I receive it now. I hallelujah. receive it. I receive it. Before this month is over, those of you that are going to make that seed, that's going to sow that seed tonight, before this month is over, we only got, I'm, what, about another four, five, six days in this month? It's Sunday, I believe it's July the 31st. Sunday is the first. Sunday, Sunday is, is the first. July the 31st. July 31st. So Monday is the first. That means God has got to move quick. Before this month is over, God is going to do something in your life. He's going to turn some things around. Hear me. I want you to sow that uncommon seed tonight and believe God. I got to go. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll be in, in service on Sunday. I'm looking yes, forward to yes, seeing you. 11 a.m., yeah. all right? All roads lead to the Power of Faith Church, 24502 Campbell Street. Come prepared to give God praise and receive a word from the Lord on Sunday. All right? Pastor, we got to go. The winders are saying, put your trust in him. Nah. Put your trust in God. Trust in God. Remember. Remember, go, go with God. God. And God, God will, will go, with, go you. with you. God bless you. Tomorrow's sun will let you know it's not done.